Welcome, this is Jane Gardner, and welcome to the Business of At-Home Business, where we're talking about the Home Biz Startup TV, where we're going to be talking about how to start, run, and grow a home business. And today, we're going to be talking about subjects that are of interest to anyone who wants to run a home business. So I'm Jane Gardner, and let's get started. I'll be telling you about this show right about now. Hi, this is Jane and it's World Domination Wednesday today, which is all about your customer. So yes, we already have looked at who is your customer and you've already had a look at defining who your customer profile is. And now we're getting on to giving your customer what they want. After we defined what your customer wanted by looking at who your customer is, now we want to give them what they want by making a sale. So this is going to be the harder part here, but we're going to go through it and start from the beginning. I'm Jane Gardner. I work with my husband for 20 years in a structural engineering firm, and uh, we live over in Western Canada. And I did these, um, we're going to be talking about defining what your customer wants. So we went over that for the last four weeks, defining uh, how you can research what you customer what you may want from you, but more importantly, who they are. And so that you can uh, give them the solution that they want. And then now we're going to be talking about making the sale, about giving your customer what they want. After that, it's keeping your customers and then keep growing your business with having more customers as your own customers make uh, them themselves your raving fans and talk to everybody else about your service and custom and solutions. So today we're going to be talking about who are your customers. We've already talked about but your customers are those who want your solution to their problems or they want your solution to fulfill their desire. There is 3.4 billion internet users online today and for those of you who have an online business, I'm sure once you define your ideal customer profile, you'll be able to find your ideal customer and give them their solution after you have figured out the messaging in order for them to understand who you are. So we looked at for the last four weeks some of the res research that you can do to define your ideal customer for your product or service. We can look at your demographics. We can look at the geographics of an audience. We can even look at the psychographics, cultural uh, information about an audience. We can go into media and find out more about your audience, whether it's on social media or magazines or government research or white papers. And then on the last day, we looked at the purchasing behavior of your customers and some of the places like Facebook where you can go and have a look for them and see what they're spending their money on. And so you can decide how you can also attract them to your solution by finding out what they purchase. So you can see some of those episodes at jgtips.com backslash YouTube. I have a playlist called Solopreneur Success Strategies and all of my shows are in that playlist. So you can just go back and uh, have a look at the previous episodes on finding your ideal customer by looking at the research that you can find about them. So as I mentioned, your customers are those who want your solution or they want to be able to fulfill their desire. Or if it's a problem, well, it's all about the problem as well. But today we're going to be looking at, before we decide how we're going to actually sell to your customer, we're going to look at first how do you design an ideal customer experience. Now if you've been on my um, Get Your Message Out Tuesday, we've been talking about you and your brand and how you and your brand is being defined by who your customers are and what your solutions are. And one of the things that you need to be able to do is get an ideal customer experience where they experience your brand which means they're experiencing you and your messaging. So it's a core part of a brand is making it an ideal customer experience for your customers and you need to be consistent in your branding 
you need to clearly define who you are in your branding and we did that on Tuesday and get your message out Tuesday you want to communicate your brand to your target market by using uh, brand elements and messaging especially the brand is your promise your commitment and how you stand out from others and you have to make every part of the customer experience consistent it's all about consistency so it's always good to figure out your brand and your customer experience before you actually create your brand messaging so then you have to identify your core values which will help you identify your brand so how do you want your people to feel your customers when they come to visit you at your business whether it's online or offline what kind of relationship do you want them to have with you do you want to be remote or do you want to be on video like I am do you want it just to be an identity of a larger business with no um, uh, president uh, profile being experienced um, what do you want your customers to say about you so the value proposition is key in your customer expect expectations so it's always good to be able to communicate your values clearly whether it's on your website in your brochures or on your even on your products or services your values speak for you and your brand so the customer experience is a relationship some things to ask yourself about your what kind of experience you want to create include what is the image that you want to have uh, whether it's on your website or your brochure what is the emotions you want to spark when you're on your website or your brochures or your information or when you're out in public what is the culture of your company and uh, do you make your mission and your vision and your values clear to people who visit your website and your company and what is your company's personality going to be in terms of what speaks to your customer for example um, Apple is one company that has a real personality and it makes it clear what its personality is and do you want to have as clear personality for your business the more you personalize the experience and make it a relationship the easier it is to make it an ideal experience for the customer So also some of the small factors that may contribute to your brand image include your graphics, whether it's on your packaging or on your, on your website. And it's the company culture and the appearance of your employees who uh, represent you, whether it's on the website or in real life, at conventions, etc. So you have to remember all of this in terms of your customer experience. If your employees are rude to a customer, then you're going to be losing a few customers. So you have to be sure that you know what you want your customers to experience when they connect with you for the first time and for the next time, for each time. So some specific things that could make you unique are the unique traits that uh, why your customers chose you over your competitors. So what's the specifics about you that make you unique in your business? This is something called your unique value pro proposition, which you have to work on, obviously, by looking at your competitors, as well as what your customers might be interested in, in terms of defining what your uniqueness might be. And this is what we discussed on Get Your Message Out Tuesday about uh, be differentiating from your competitors and making yourself unique. So of course, besides working that on yourself you can always ask your customers directly what makes you unique because the customer experience is always emotional so you have to remember that and remember that you have to be consistent in your appearance in your branding in your experience for your customers as they journey through your business you have to make sure that you know what kind of emotion you want for your customers to experience so a good customer experience will always trigger emotions that positively affect them and inspire loyalty in them so you've got to remember to make sure that your website is all built correctly and there's no lost links and that it's very easy to get a hold of you 
when there might be an issue by a customer in terms of getting in terms of customer service um, as well as of course when you're out in public how you how you react to people who are your customers so you have to remember that it's always emotional for the customer and that the great experience will have to exceed their expectations in order for them to be Come your raving fans so they have a wow factor if you exceed your customers expectations through small details so if you make it easier for them to buy something for example on their website or find something or you communicate with them on the regular basis and you're giving them a few um, discounts because they are loyal customers these kind of things will delight your customers and anticipate their desire to actually uh, experience more of you as a business in terms of purchasing more from you so that is also another very simple thing you might want to consider is how will you be able to have different products for your customer to continue to buy from you again and again it's much easier to get a customer to buy from you again and again than to get a new customer who will buy from you the first time a customer buy for from you it is supposed to be the best easiest experience for them they will become um, more um, more of a raving fan by coming back and buying from you again and again if you have opportunities for them to buy and buy from you again so this is some of the things that you have to think about before you even consider putting something up for sale how do you make the experience easy for your new prospect to come in and uh, communicate with them and even maybe have some preliminary free offers or coupons or discounts for them so that they can purchase at, at a future date and and become uh, into a deeper relationship with you so these are the some of the things that you have to think about before you even design a website or a sales page we've been discussing about um, what are some of the things you first you have to start to think about as to how to make it a very easy ideal experience for your customer to come to your website or come to your your business uh, whether it's brick and mortar or whether it's online in order to communicate and connect with you so next week we'll be looking at um, selling and some of the ways to make it easy for your customer to come and buy something from you that would always be good and uh, then after that we'll be looking at the psychology of buying and some of the ways that I can help you uh, figure out how to make a sale more successfully so this is Jane Garner and I'd like to thank you for listening to World Domination Wednesday and I'll see you next week please go and uh, check out the website at jane-gardner.com or jgtips.com backslash what was it what was it we're gonna do i forget now <laughs> oh it's it's wdw world domination wednesday is the website for the video if you'd like to look over these uh, questions again so that's uh, http uh, colon backslash backslash uh, jgtips.com backslash wdw which of course stands for world domination wednesday because of course for our customers we want them we want them to be our raving fans and be our customers and come and buy from us again and again so i do have another uh well, anyway, we won't talk about that at the other course setting up on um, how to make people your raving fans. But anyway, so this is Jane Gardner at World Domination Wednesday, and thank you for listening. Hope you found that useful, and subscribe at http colon backslash backslash h-o-m-e-b-i-z-s-t-a-r-t-u-p-t-b which is homebizstartuptv.com or go to bohb.com which is the business of at home business to find out more information and start your business now because we have plenty of resources over there so see you there